Hello and welcome! This week is going to be all about the life and times of Nellie Bly, who was actually born Elizabeth Jane Cochran, so we really took a long walk with that name. She was born in May of 1864 in Cochran's Mills, Pennsylvania, and she was called Pinky as a young girl just because she wore pink so much, so... Now we're at six names. Her dad was a merchant, a postmaster, and a judge in Cochran's Mill, and really just an all-around big deal, until he died in 1870, leaving Elizabeth Pinky and her four siblings very poor. Her mom moved the family to Pittsburgh to find work, which is where young Pinky ran across an article entitled, What Girls Are Good For, which mainly consisted of birthing children and keeping house, which she didn't love. Pinky wrote a fire response under the pseudonym Lonely Orphan Girl, which impressed the editor enough for him to invite her on as a full-time writer. Her pen name became Nellie Bly, and thus her life as a journalist had officially begun. Initially, Nellie largely focused on the lives of working women and wrote a series of investigative articles on female factory workers and their harsh conditions. But the factory owners didn't super love this, complained to the newspapers, and threatened to pull their ad. And Nellie was reassigned to cover fashion, society, and gardening, which is definitely a vibe, but definitely not Nellie's vibe. <laughs> so naturally, she went to Mexico, where she protested imprisonment of journalists and wrote about widespread poverty and lottery addictions until she was threatened with arrest and forced to leave. Also, she was 21 for all of this. 21. Once she gets back, she goes to work for the New York World newspaper and took on an undercover writing assignment, feigning insanity to investigate reports of brutality and neglect at the Women's Lunatic Asylum on Blackwell's Island, which is now known as Roosevelt Island and it's right in between Manhattan and Queens. Bly wrote a massive expose about the asylum entitled 10 Days in a Madhouse, in which she chronicles her experiences of undrinkable water, lack of protection from the cold, terrible food, waste, rats, horrible treatment, abuse, and so much more. To say the least, it was a really rough time. Her expose caused a sensation which prompted reforms, including a grand jury investigation and a budget increase of $850,000 for mental health facilities. Nellie also got pretty famous for her work and received widespread critical acclaim. Also, that amount of money in 1887 would be worth about $24 million today, so she did really good. <laughs> Apart from the obvious super importance of that piece of journalism alone, her expose also kicked off what would become known as stunt or detective reporting, a precursor to investigative journalism. Stunt girls became a prototype of the earliest female journalists, and they deserve a recap of their very own, but for now I'll just say, trailblazing very cool and largely thanks to Nellie Bly. Anyway, after this, Nellie suggested to her newspaper that she take a trip around the whole world to turn the fictional Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne into reality. Her newspaper agreed and gave her all of two days notice. Cool, guys. Thank you so much. She brought only the essentials, two traveling caps with very Sherlock Holmes vibes, three veils, slippers, paper, pencils and pens, an inkstand, toiletries, needle and thread, dressing gown, which I think is like a bathrobe, tennis blazer, handkerchief, small flask, drinking cup, extra underwear, and cold cream, which she fit into one bag, so she's got a real Mary Poppins vibe. Thus begins Nellie's journey, reporting back the entire time via telegraph while newspaper readers at home bet on how long it would take her. She went through England, France, where she met Jules Verne and he was super stoked, Brindisi, the Suez Canal, Colombo and Ceylon, Penang and Singapore, Hong Kong and Japan. She went via steamships and railroad, visited a leper colony, and wait for it, bought a monkey, which she named McGinty, which I really like. She arrived in San Francisco after circumnavigating the world in 72 days and set a world record. Apparently when McGinty and Bly got home, McGinty promptly shattered every dish in her house, which is just, I mean, classic McGinty. Bly went on to marry millionaire manufacturer Robert Seaman, despite their 42-year age difference, and headed up his company after his death in 1904. Managing the business proved to be a challenge due to employee embezzlement, but she did end up receiving patents for new inventions, and she eventually became one of the leading women industrialists in the United States for a short time. She eventually turned back to reporting and became a war correspondent during World War I. She visited war zones and was arrested after being mistaken for a British spy. She died in 1922 at age 57 and is buried in New York. So that's Nellie, a trailblazer, briefly a monkey mom, a journalist, an advocate, and an absolute legend. Stay tuned for more recaps.